Hello everybody, my name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. And we are starting today. It's a beautiful Friday morning. It's, uh, what is it, 1017 here in the morning. Cold outside, it's raining, but it's okay. So today's live stream is called What Music Do You Listen To? And um, the reason I called it that is because I've had some interesting experiences over the past while talking to students and I've had this many times in the past before and I just want to talk about it today. I had a student not too long ago and he wanted to take guitar from me and so I said oh what music do you listen to and he said I don't listen to music and I went okay <laughs> what do you want to play he goes I don't know but I want to play guitar so this is really an interesting thing for me because uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but there are instances where I have students that they, um, they want to play a musical instrument, but they don't really listen to music very well. And I think this is something that's happened over the last few years. Um, it's uh, something that has evolved. Let me change my mic setting just really quick here. All right. So um, I've had also other students say things like, um, when, I, when I'm asking them, you know, have you listened to this piece of music that you're working on? And I've had people say, yeah, I've listened to it once or twice. And it's like, what? You, you've listened to it twice? Um, back in when I was uh, studying music in college, it was really interesting because, um, you know, I was a music major at uh, El Camino College in Gardena, California. And one of the things you had to do, and, and also I, I studied in other colleges too, but one of the things you had to do was that you had to uh, actually listen to different types of music if you were a major, if you were a music major, because they wanted you to have a background and you studied music history, you studied music theory. Well, I studied music theory. Uh, and, um, you know, you start from like the medieval period and you go through there and you go through the Renaissance period and then you go through the um, Baroque, classical, uh, the Impressionistic period. I missed the Romantic, Romantic, Impressionistic. And then the modern period, the modern period to us was starting at 1900 up to wherever we were. I don't know what they do now because it's been years and years uh, since I was in college, so I don't know what they call the 1900s anymore. But we used to call it the, the modern period. Well, and, and when I was just starting out and uh, listening to uh, music, you know, when I was a teenager or even preteen, uh, when we bought albums, what we would do is we would put the album on, you know, and this is in the... Um, record players, okay? So you'd put the album on and you put the needle on there and, and you listen to the record, you know, you listen to the whole record from the beginning to the end. And then you'd flip it over, right? And from the beginning to the end. And there was about 43 minutes of music on a record. That's all you could get on there. And so we were engrossed in that and we were just absorbing it. And if you wanted to listen to it again or a certain part, you'd have to lift up the needle either by hand or with the little lever. You know, if you had a fancy turntable, you'd lift it up, move it over, and drop it again and hope you didn't scratch the record. Well, I did that many times, hundreds, maybe even thousands of times when I was listening to music. I would listen to different parts to try to figure it out. And I would listen to music um, from the beginning to the end, from the beginning of one album to the end of the album. And I'd, of course, I'd say, oh, I, I like that one the best or something. But most of the time, the albums that I listened to when I was growing up were amazing. Now, in, on the uh, thumbnail of this particular video, I put Jimi Hendrix. All right. Let's just talk about Jimi Hendrix for a second. Let's see where he's at. Oops. Oops. I'm messing up. I did practice this before, but I was sitting down. Maybe I should sit down. Try it again. Oop, messed up. OK, 
Okay, so there's a little Jimi Hendrix, right? Okay, so uh, another thing I put on there was I put on B.B. King. And B.B. King, uh, blues artist, I mean, he's an icon of blues. And uh, one song that I had listened to and uh, learned in the past is blue, The Blues Is Gone. Something like this. So you start with it. It was actually in B minor. This is in A minor. So it's a great progression. So there's the progression. Let me let me look at my comments here. Lunar Druid, who are you? Hey, how? Been about 21 years. Did I teach you? Did I teach you? I'm just wondering. Yeah, and where was it? What city was it in? Because I've been in different cities. Okay, um, let's go on. I put Eric Clapton on there. put the the eagles on there I'm gonna put a capo on the seventh fret right here let's get, get rid of my pick oh, that's one way to get rid of it just to drop it right and so you all know Hotel California right well do you listen to these people there's a couple of other people faces that I put on there and one of them was Beethoven let me take my headphones off for a second. Because when I play Beethoven, I don't play him on the guitar, I play him on the piano. It's called Moonlight Sonata, and here's another one. Which is for Elise, right? Those are both Beethoven pieces. And then I also put Bach's picture on there because he's very famous. mistake there. And then I like to play this piece by Bach. Let's try it again. That's a piece I'm working on. It's called, well, it's from the Partita Number no. One in B flat major. But you know, when I start playing it live, it's like, oh, oh nice mistake. Oh well. 
that's the way it is. You know, you play things live, you make mistakes, you get nervous. It's like, oh, I want to do good. But anyway, so what do you listen to? You can put them in the comments there so I can see them. And what I'm saying to you now is that when you're working on a piece of music, you need to listen to the music. And when I do that, when I'm playing a piece of music, I listen to it over and over and over and over again. In fact, a lot of times before I actually teach a piece of music or play a piece of music, um, when I'm learning a piece of music, I will listen to the music like 25 times, 30 times over and over. And of course, you can do it while you're eating cereal or when you're eating breakfast, when you're driving in your car, any of those things. You know, anytime you're, uh, you're just doing something that doesn't take a lot of thought. Pulling weeds in the garden if you do that. Because music is a language. Music is a language and you need to learn that language by listening. So I, I um, tell you that you need to do this. You need to listen. You need to focus on music very carefully and listen. Now, when I was growing up and listening to music, one of my uh, favorite bands was Jethro Tull. And uh, I would listen to, and in fact, a friend of mine, you know, turned me on to Aqualung, 1971 is when that album came out. And I would listen to it over and over, and I would put the, the album on a, you know, like, uh, on Aqualung, you know, how's it go? There it is. listen to that I'd listen to the guitar part I'd listen to the bass part I'd listen to the and I would go through and listen to the whole thing and just focus on the bass listen to the drums listen to the keyboards listen to the vocal and just focus and that's probably one of the reasons that I can actually you know figure things out pretty well today when I sit down and someone says you know hey I'd like to learn this song and I'm like oh I've never heard that before that's Ed Sheeran okay put it on what is it oh okay and then I, we put it on and I start figuring it out. And usually, you know, halfway through the song, I've got the chords or less, especially if it's Ed Sheeran, because it's usually pretty easy. So that's what I tell you to do. You need to listen. You need to focus. You need to do all those things. I'm sorry that I messed up all the, all the songs that I attempted to play today, all the way from, uh, you know, Jimi Hendrix to Eric Clapton, the Eagles and stuff like that. It's like, OK, whatever. Anyway, so thanks for being here, and um, I'm going to go hang out with some of my supporters and uh, talk to them, answer questions. If you'd like to learn how to become a supporter, look in the description. Now, one more thing before I go. What are you going to work on this week? Oh, by the way, I've been working on uh, Dust in the Wind just lately, and I did come out with Dust in the Wind video. And as I was focusing on Dust in the Wind, one of my students wanted to play Dust in the Wind, and I was going to write out some stuff for him because he couldn't really quite understand how to put together from my lead sheet and my tab sheet, my intro tab sheet, and then the, the sheet on uh, how to do the, the lead, the acoustic part in the lead. Okay. Um... So I, I started to write it down for him, and I started to discover that some of the things that I thought were going on were a little different than what they actually are because I was really focusing in on it. So I'm going to have that coming out, let's see, probably today to my supporters, and then I'm going to put it in my Music and Lead Sheets book, and that will become available to anyone who becomes a supporter. Look in the description for that. And this will be probably the most correct tab sheet and lyric sheet that I've ever done on that particular song. Wonderful song, mm. Dust in the Wind. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Listen to all kinds of music, not just blues, not just rock and roll, not just heavy metal, but branch out and listen to different kinds. Let's see what someone said here. Gloria Esteban. Uh, Credence, Credence Clearwater Revival. Jimmy Buffett, yeah. We sit away in Margaritaville. Eva Cassidy, Eva Cassidy, Andreas Volenweider, 
Hmm, I'm going to have to look that one up. John Stewart, John Denver, Santana, Peter Paul, and Almond Joy. <laughs> Is that Peter Paul and Mary? Joni Mitchell. Oh, Joni Mitchell. That's great. You've got Ode to Joy Tab on here. Why have you got Ode to Joy Tab on here? I'm wondering. A simple version of Ode to Joy Tab is on my website, quail-studios.com. Go to uh, The Guitar Book under Music, that tab. Look at The Guitar Book. Go down and find Ode to Joy. The tab is there. Okay, and you can see what I'm doing there. All right, I got to go. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye.